Hi, I'm Ellen McCauley. I'm at Pray It Off in Syracuse, New York on September 19, 2019. And I have been doing Pray It Off for uh, 11 and a half years. What I've noticed, because every week people turn in a food log, what I've noticed is that many of our group members are having way too much processed food, which includes way too much sodium. And I personally have a, a problem with sodium. And uh, I really feel that it's something that as a group of people that are trying to remain healthy, we really need to wrap our head around the importance of looking at sodium in our daily lives and in our food. And I'm very pleased to say that through my work at Onondaga County Office for Aging, we have had some uh, healthy uh, presentations that you can go on your lunch, lunch and learn, and go and watch. And I was, um, I sign up, they're free. Uh, you know me, anything free, I'll go, you know? So uh, I've seen this uh, person <laughs> give uh, presentations on, on sodium, on healthy eating. Uh, each year our department does a really wonderful nutrition and health expo for seniors that many of you have been to. So I, I got to know her well through through that event. And I'm just so pleased and and she's taking time out of her life to come here and talk to us about sodium. And I'd like a huge round of applause for Roseanne Jones from the Health Department at Onondaga. Come right up, Roseanne. But get it right, right up there. Right up here. Okay. Right up there. I'm going to try. I'm not good at the microphone thing. So I'm Roseanne Jones. I'm from Onondaga County Health Department. I work with, um, actually I have a grant right now for the sodium reduction. So I've been learning a lot about it myself. And so I'm going to just talk to you about, and I think you have some of the slides in your packets that you got. So you can kind of follow along. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how uh, sodium affects our bodies and how it helps our bodies, how it hurts, it can hurt our bodies, and some of the sources that are of sodium in our diets, and then some tips about how to avoid getting too much. Does that sound good? Sounds good. So how many people are following and you know watching the sodium in their diet now? Oh, that's a good number. That's a really good number. Okay, so, all right, so this, and you'll probably, if you have something to say, I want you to just reach up and I will stop because I really love to have interactions. So please feel free to ask questions and add your comments as we go along because I'm sure you have very nice anecdotes to add to what I'm saying up here. So feel free. Right, Ellen? Very. That's what I do. <laughs> I encourage conversation. So, okay, so you probably know that salt is a combination of sodium and chloride. So it's more chloride than sodium. So what we need it for in our bodies is to balance our fluid intake. So it balances the fluid. Fluid in our body keeps us warm in the winter, cool in the summer. You have to have enough, but you don't want too much. So it's very good for that. And plus there's other things that we need the fluid for in our bodies. Um, it also keeps our nerves stimulating and, and nerves working very well. So the, the combination of sodium and chloride are always working to keep our muscles, you know, active and stimulated, as well as the heart muscle. So you got to keep that in mind. All right. So we don't we need salt, but we don't need too much of it. And so um, it can bad. The part of it that's not good for us is when it we have too much of it, and you get high blood pressure, or you could have a stroke if it's too much or if it's, because it, it does things to our body. What our body wants to do with it is if we consume too much salt, our body wants to dilute it in our, in our veins. So it takes all of our water from the rest of our body and puts it in our veins, and then you can see how that could create a huge pressure inside your arteries and veins. And that's what we don't want. You don't want that pressure. It also, you probably notice the bloating, so that, that means your water is off in your body, so if you get bloating or headaches, 
and weight gain, all of those things are from fluid that's off because you have too much sodium and that's collecting, making you hold on to more water to dilute the sodium in your body. Okay, so I think <coughs> I'm trying to keep going here. Let's see. So there are recommendations for sodium. And so the, for adults, they're saying 2,300 milligrams a day. And that I'll give you a little reference on that. A teaspoon of salt is 2,400 milligrams. So if you need 2,300 milligrams, it's about a teaspoon of salt. So for, the, for everything that you consume. So what you're adding to your cooking at the table, most of it's gonna be coming from what you're buying at the grocery store or you're eating at a restaurant. And I'll show you that in a minute. So kids need a little bit less, and it goes right down to kids that are about uh, to two to three years old, they need about 1,500. But I'm gonna give you a little caveat here, and I think most of us, including me in this room, will fit this criteria. So this 2,300 really doesn't apply to all adults. If you're over 50, if you have in a, you know, high blood pressure already, or have had heart disease or a stroke, if you're African American, you, or you have a kidney problem, then you need 1,500 or less. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that really is a huge number. That means, so I think those numbers are <coughs> off because not all adults need it. It really is most of us should be consuming 1,500 milligrams or less when you put all of those factors together, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are consuming about 3,700 milligrams on average per day as adults. And kids are consuming about 3,400 because of what we're eating. So isn't that terrible? Yeah, yeah that's an average number. So, and that's a CDC number. They, they try to watch what people are eating and they can tell. They do lots of studies. So then there's a little pyramid on here and it tells where our salt is coming from. And so, it might surprise you. And these numbers, I've seen different versions of these numbers, and I'm gonna say between 77 and 85% of the salt we consume is coming from foods that we buy from the grocery store and when you're eating out at a restaurant combined. So that's, that's the most significant number. The salt that you're adding at the table is about 5%, five or 6%. That's really like a little tiny dot in, in the whole bucket of, or whatever, the whole picture here. And then what you put in your cooking also is about 5%. So it's not much. Okay, so where do you find this salt in the grocery store? Anybody know? What do you want to? Canned foods. Canned foods? Processed. Processed foods. Pastas. Pasta, actually, I'm going to say, unless it has a sauce on it, pasta has hardly any sodium in it. Really? Yeah, so there you go. There's your, yeah. but you got to watch your serving size on that. It doesn't bread. have a lot of salt, but. Oh, bread. bread. Breads are high, usually, yeah. Yep. Cheese is high. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm missing the microphone. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Give me a wave again if I. If I start to lose, get wobbly up here. Okay, so yes, you're right. So uh, other things. So the things that really surprised me when I started working on this grant is Eggo waffles are high in sodium. Like you can't taste it in there. You're not thinking this is high in salt, right? You're just not thinking that. Pancake mixes, really high in salt. Surprise, right? Um, and you gotta be careful of the, all those foods that you think you're doing really well with, like, I'm, I hate to throw any brand under the bus, but Amy's Organic, that's, you know, broccoli and brown rice and tofu, and it's just so high in sodium, you, you will be very surprised when you go back and look at the label next time. So just because it says organic on it or whole grain, you still can't trust it. You gotta look at the, you have to look at the numbers. So gluten-free, you know, actually, I'm going to say for gluten-free, I don't think they mean to do this, but there really isn't. The, the products that I have noticed and looked at, they aren't higher in sodium, but you're losing a lot of benefit when you eat gluten-free. If you don't have to eat gluten-free, don't eat gluten-free, so, because they take all the fiber out of those products. Sorry, can we that? 
which which part? About the gluten free. So the gluten. I'm just saying, if you don't need to eat gluten free, I don't recommend it because the gluten is the protein in your breads, yeah. and so you need that. And plus, they take all the fiber out. They take many of the vitamins and minerals out. They process that way more than they do white bread. So you're really missing out on quite a bit if you're. No, she's talking just, about bread. just bread. Just bread, like gluten, gluten free, like bread and things like that, yeah. Okay, and so another little uh, surprise might be when you're buying fresh chicken or turkey. So they will inject that with broth or brine. And so you gotta keep, kinda keep an eye on that too because they're putting that in there. I think, I, I really, I like to think that they're not doing it just to make more money to make your product heavier. <laughs> Which, I'm, I'm not gonna say that that's not what they're doing that for. So, it could be that they're just trying to make you pay more for less. But it could be just preserving it. But, but you can find it without it in there. But they have to disclose that on the label, they right? They have to disclose it on the label. Usually, if you don't see a nutrition facts label on the chicken that you're buying, that means they didn't do anything to it and it's just chicken. But if you do see a nutrition facts label on there, then you know that they had to add something, to, they were adding something to it because they have to disclose how much sodium is in it. Okay? Okay, the salty six. So the one for kids is on here and the one for adults. And the only difference between them is kids have the sandwich, which puts together the lunch meat and the bread, which is on both of them, and then the adults have that chicken that has that's injected with the with the broth or the brine. What, what would be the average that they would put on? How much sodium would they? It's, it's different every time. So they'll say, and I don't even, I can't even tell you exactly what. You, you just you can look at the label and see, but it'll say five percent or fifteen percent. You know they'll just yeah they won't give a right yeah. So they'll when you look at again it'll tell you how much sodium is in there per serving per you know three ounces or whatever is what they I would imagine that they would consider a serving. What about Asian foods? Because I know you know restaurants is one thing, but then if you are cooking at home and I use fish sauce and soy sauce, mm -hmm. it probably goes up more than shaking salt on something, right? Yeah, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that most of those products are pretty high in sodium. When someone asks a question, would you mind repeating it? Sure. So everyone can hear it. How are we doing table 10 and 11? Can you hear? No. no. All right, they can't okay. hear. Okay, so the question was, um, when making Asian foods at home and you're using um, soy sauce and oyster sauce, <laughs> Is it, you know, how does that fare with the sodium? And I'm thinking that would be, those products would probably be pretty high. Even when I buy soy sauce, because I, I buy a reduced sodium soy sauce, it's still really high. So you can, you know, and I still want to use it and I still do use it, but I'm sparing and I just put on the least amount that I can get away with. <coughs> yep. We're going to take a break right here. Yep.